The next type of data I'll be talking about is statistical data or reference data, that is data that reference to an existing data set, a spatial data set. So this is typically statistical data that is referencing to administrative units or something like that, that it relates to. If um, we remember from a le the lecture on attribute data, the basic idea is that we have some spatial units, we have some attribute tables belonging to that spatial unit, we have a spreadsheet in Excel or our spreadsheet software, and we then establish a join between the two based on a common attribute value. So if the municipality code is 101, which is Copenhagen, and it's 101 over here is Copenhagen, then the data from this row belongs together with this spatial unit that is represented by this row. And once we've done that, we can then map new attributes from our data. So when working with this type of data, we're going to join just like we've done in an earlier video. There's a lot of um, units at, for doing spatial data. Um, in Denmark, we have municipalities for working data statistical data. Um, or regions or counties or parishes or uh, postal codes or zip codes so these are some of those administrative units that is commonly used for statistical data um, our national organizations have also created units but what they have done is they have tried to uh, homogenize these administrative units to specific sizes an example of this is EU's NOTS, um, Nomenclature Units of Terrestrial Statistics, NOTS. And what they basically are is that at level zero, NOTS is always a country. At level one, it is a unit which is between three and eight million um, inhabitants. So for Denmark, that is um, the country. So both level zero and level one is Denmark in our case but if you're Germany it would be uh, the Linda in Germany then we have not two which is between uh, 0.8 and 3 million inhabitants so we have what is in Danish our region so who is that's almost Zealand and so on and then not level three which is between 150,000 and 800,000 that's uh, the municipalities. So those are the ways that NOTS tries to make municipalities comparable between Denmark and France or Germany where we have different, quite different sizes of municipalities. They are simply tried to be grouping in these levels. So NOTS level zero, always countries, one between three and eight millions, two between 0.8 and three million, and knots level three between 150 and 800,000 inhabitants. Um, OECD has the same concept. They call them terrestrial units or terrestrial levels. And um, they use what um, as additional ones, and then they have this Lao. Uh, we also can find Lao is local administrative units. So um, the Lao units we have sometimes in statistical data is uh, one is municipality, two is parishes. Not seldom used, but still. And finally, OCD is terrestrial uh, level. Uh, TL2 is the same as NOTS2, and TL3 is the same as NOTS3. So if you get data from OCD, they will perhaps be comparable with um, um, NOTS level 2 and 3. Our organizations have other ways of doing it. Um, the municipality of Copenhagen have what is called Rode Court. So they are some very old um, socio-economical 
uh, units that were originally in some taxation system, but they are still existing there. And the statistical office of the Copenhagen of Municipal, uh, the municipality of Copenhagen um, still uses these rural units as its spatial units. So you can get detailed statistical data on Copenhagen if that's what you're working with. Um, the problem is, of course, that administrative units they are not really the best. You know, um, they change over time. Um, they are boundaries between them, which is not very, not necessarily very logic. So there's lots of reasons why um, administrative units is not a very good way of organizing statistical data. Therefore, it is becoming more and more common to use um, what we call harmonized multi-resolution grids. So um, grids that fit into each other. And so Denmark has a grid that matches the EU grid and also the Nordic countries has the same grid that matches. And um, so there is a system that where the Courses grid cell is 100 by 100 kilometers, then 10 by 10 kilometers, 1 by 1 kilometer. And that's probably where it starts getting interesting when we say that we have units of 100 by 100 meters. So there's quite a lot of statistics available also at uh, both 10, 1 kilometers and 0.1 kilometers, 100 meters. Um, and that's sometimes this data costs extra money, so that's a bit annoying. Um, but in a country like Denmark, where basically all statistics is generated on the addresses of people, then we could easily work with this type of very detailed data. But then the statistical office has found out that hmm, this might be interesting as data for direct marketing, and therefore they see a market in it, and therefore they cost money. So we as universities must say, hmm, LS. Of course, there's a lot of problem with naming things. There are different ways that um, if you want to do joins, they have to, we have to use a, a, a consistent naming scheme. Um, Knots has a well-defined naming system um, that we can use. Uh, um, there's also uh, a ISO code, uh, which is the one you know from uh, number plates, but there's also a, a a numerical one, and there is the FIPS codes. By the way, this is a link to uh, the ISO code here. So here we can see what if uh, we look for Denmark, we can look what is the ISO code. So this is the ISO code for Denmark, and we have D these are for the sub regions of Denmark. So DK is Denmark as the ISO code. And um, we then have units from 81 to 85 as the subunits. So there is standardizations. Um, and there's another thing you also have to be aware of that is that MS of units are typically, for instance, a, a municipality of Copenhagen consists of lots of small areas that um, in the harbor are small islands. So that's a wee bit annoying when you're going to join and you're going to label data. So in general, it's a good idea to make sure that you are working with what is called a dissolved data set, where all of the areas that belong to one unit, they have been dissolved and merged together into one unit. Um, if you can't find the data set, there is on our server, they call data for statistics. There is a, a folder specific with these units and for the EU we can um, download the data from this web address or you can find Google um, uh, Nuts and uh, GIS or Nuts and Shapefiles and you'll get to this address. But anyway, if we go to this address, we see that we have the Nuts unit in the 2030 version. This is a bit of an annoying thing with the knots that they have a tendency to change. So the 
delimitation of the knots, there's a 2006 version, a 2010 version, and a 2013 version. So it's very difficult to make historical data sets on knots because they keep changing, which is ah, the thing about elements of units not being the best for, um, for statistical purposes. But that's um, what you have to be aware of. So if you're going to download some statistical NOTS data from 2006, make sure that you also use the shape files that belong to the 2006 data set. I'll be using the newest one. So if you go to 2013 and I'll just download uh, the shape file. And once I've downloaded, I will place it in my... Um, data folder in, uh, in QGIS. So we have different units that we can um, use for doing statistical data. The data itself, typically it's spreadsheet data and it's typically something you have downloaded, but it doesn't have to be that. You can generate your own spreadsheet data um, through your survey work or whatever you're doing, as long as you just follow the standard rules for what how they are. So if we now start in QGIS, and I'll start by loading a statistical data set. Um, there. Uh, that's probably something down there. In years. So here we have Danish municipalities. And um, if I use my eye tool and click on this data set here, I will have some basic information about what's there. Um, there is a municipality code, and you can see there's two more or less identical versions of it. And the difference can be seen if we open the attribute table of it because we have the municipality code as 101 and the municipality 101 but you can see they are differently aligned and that's because this is a text and this is a number and never really know how things turn out uh, when downloading data from the Danish statistical office sometimes you get the codes as numbers sometimes as text. So therefore we have both of them. So the interesting thing is that we have Copenhagen here and it has a code. If I want to create some data in Excel, just find Excel, and want to write some data, so I'll say Muni. I always, if we look at my power, it says that the first row line of our data must contain the names of the attributes. So my first one is going to go Muni. And I'll, let's say, uh, how many cats are present in each municipality and how many dogs. I have no idea they're going to be absolutely fictive values, but just to show the principle. So 101, that's Copenhagen municipality. And there is uh, five, ah, there's 200,000, no, there's not. Uh, 100,000 cats in Copenhagen and there's about... Uh, 20,000 dogs and in another municipality let's say um, we have the municipality of Flexbet we worked that before so that is 147 so I go in my spreadsheet and say 147 and there's only 40,000 cats and uh, 10,000 dogs and just to take the next one uh, let's take them Drauer which is 155 155 and there's uh, only 10,000 cats and there's uh, 20,000 dogs out there so that's basically the principle so what I've done is I'm trying to follow this guideline that says that the first row up here is the name of the attributes. Then name has to start with a letter 
and they might contain letters, numbers and underscores. Sometimes you can get away with other things, but that's um, playing safe. Then we have for each spatial unit, that's in this case municipalities, we have a row. And in each row there must be one column that contains a unique identifier that matches with my data. And that was why I was looking at here. So I was using the municipality code and I was in my Excel creating my municipality code. So I have one attribute here that will match up. It's continuous and I can, if I want to have more data, I could share them across, have different she uh, sheets. But that's fine with me. I'll stay, say this data here and I will just save it on my computer in my GIS folder and call it cats and dogs CAD. So I'll close it down and I'll go and um, to QGIS. You'll probably find it a wee bit disappointing that if I go here, should be here you, and look, um, see, no. Hmm. Uh, I can load the data set by using add vector data. And it's a bit mm, strange that it's a vector data, but that's because uh, it uses um, what is called GDale to load the data. And so I could say file and then browse and to my GIS data um, and hopefully I will now be able to see my uh, cats and dogs somewhere here so cad c a d there so here I can load it um, and if I go to my layers, I've got it here, and I can uh, open the attribute data. So here we've got my cats and my dogs. I must admit, this is one of the situations where I find it easier to simply um, take it from the file system, from my JS data. Um, my CAD data set here and then simply drop it on my map and then it loads. So that's um, just because that's a bit easier. This one here has the, our attributes and they should match up with our municipalities so we can go down and we can do our join. If you can't remember how this is uh, look on the video on working with attribute data but properties and I use joins I add a join I'm going to get the data from there I'm going to match Mooney with my and it's close to which one it is it's can't remember let's find this one and see what happens and open my new attribute and you can see I've got null most of the places, but these three municipalities that I had in the data for, they have been matched up. So I can now make a final map of where we have cats in Copenhagen by saying gradiated and using, um, let's say, ratio between cats and dogs. So fields, uh, cats divided by, oops, cats divided by dogs. Classify and map it. And of course there's only data in there because that's um, the only places that enter data. So. The basics, you create stati your statistical data in a spreadsheet or whatever you use, 
and each row should match up with a spatial unit based on a single attribute that we use to join. And then all the attributes you should have want should be one column and you should have only one row at the top defining the name of the attributes. That's very important that you only want one up here. Of course we could uh, write our data like um, I did, but typically we want to download it from um, somewhere and there's basically these three places that are uh, of interest or typically used. Um, we have uh, unit data um, and then there is the statistical office of Euro Europe Eurostat and there is the Danish statistical office and I'll demonstrate how to get data out of these data banks um, just because they are commonly used and there are some small tricks in getting the data right for your use. So I'll be back with a video on each of those in a moment.